Microfluidic paper-based analytical devices use a paper substrate and microfluidic channels for chemical or biological analyses. They have gained popularity due to the increasing demand for affordable, portable, and user-friendly devices. A key element in these devices involves creating a hydrophobic barrier to control the movement of liquids. In this video, we will demonstrate one method to fabricate a paper-based device using wax ink and tape as the hydrophobic barrier, with filter paper as the substrate. This is part 2 of the series, with part 1 showing how to design the pattern in AutoCAD. In this video, we will be going over how to print the pattern from AutoCAD using a wax printer. Then we will need to melt the wax to fully infuse the wax into the paper, creating our hydrophobic barrier. Then we have now completed the fabrication part and can now apply the reagent to the detection zone and add our sample in for a colorimetric detection of the analyte. Note that this is a general overview of fabricating a microfluidic paper-based device. Certain fabrication conditions may change depending on the pattern and the type of assay being performed. Once the design is completed on AutoCAD, we will have to export our design into a PDF file, ensuring the dimensions are correct. First, click on the top left corner, on the AutoCAD logo, to open the drop-down menu. Click on the arrow next to Print and select Page Setup. Then choose the right page and click Modify. On Name, choose DWG to PDF. Then choose your paper size. On Scale, choose Custom and type in your appropriate scale. This pattern is in centimeters, so it would be 1 mm equals 0.1 unit. Then on Orientation, choose either Portrait or Landscape. Then click OK. Now, the design is ready for export. To do so, click on the printer icon at the top. Double check all of the settings. Once everything is set, click OK and save the PDF file. Before we print, we have to make sure the wax printer is warmed up. Open the PDF file and print the pattern, making sure the wax printer is chosen as the printer name. For this, the wax printer is called Xerox Color Cube. Print the pattern using a wax printer and filter paper. Then cut out individual patterns. We will now need to melt the wax. Supplies needed are the pattern, a timer, a hot plate set to a specific heat, and a small beaker. First, place the pattern on the hot plate facing up. Then, place the beaker upside down over the paper. Using the timer, leave the pattern on the hot plate for a specific amount of time, then remove from the hot plate. We will now seal the back. To do so, you will need an adhesive laminating sheet, scissors, and the pattern. Peel open the adhesive side of the laminating sheet and place the back side of the pattern onto the laminating sheet. Make sure there are no wrinkles and air bubbles. Then cut off the excess. This is what the paper pad should look like, a wax top and a laminating sheet on the bottom. Now it is time to add the assay reagents to the detection site. You will need the paper pattern, the reagent, and a pipette. Carefully pipette the reagents to the detection zone. Let the reagents fully dry before continuing to the next step. To add the sample, the materials needed are the paper device, the sample, and a pipette. Pipette the sample into the sample loading zone. Watch as the sample flows to the detection center and reacts with the reagent. The reaction will produce a color that is visible with the eye. As you can see, the detection zone has now changed color, which indicates that the colorimetric reaction occurred. The intensity or hue of the color change directly relates to the concentration of the analyte. You have now completed making a microfluidic paper-based analytical device.